Alright, so welcome to this new episode of the Devlog series, the series where I take you along on my journey while I'm building my own startup. So a real quick introduction if this is your first video of mine. I'm a 26-year-old self-taught software developer, currently working as a cloud developer. Besides that, it's my dream to publish my own app. So outside my 9 to 5, I spend a lot of time coding. I also wake up early, stick to routines, and therefore some people call me a little autistic, which I deny to my grave. And also important, I'm not some child prodigy who's been coding since he was a little kid i was at 18 years old playing league of legends and yeah, stuck in silver four so yeah i'm more the type of kid who needs to work his ass off to just get a c anyway enough backstory let's talk about how i got sucked into the high bubble called ai if you've seen my last video, you know I'm building a mobile application using Flutter. A new slash, I don't think Flutter is that. And till this day, I'm still very happy that I chose it as my tech stack. And since that last video, I've been working on, I think, everything except unit tests. <laughs> I added loading buttons, search functionality, I tried implementing the result pattern in my backend, cleaned up loads of code, and to be honest, the app is finally getting some structure. And while this structure finally felt familiar, I knew it was time for some unfamiliar territory. And it was because it was finally time to build a feature that I really wanted my app to have. But I also knew just from my gut oh, that it wouldn't be easy. And instead of me taking huge amounts of time trying to explain my feature, I just show you a familiar one you already know. It's in my fitness pal, an app designed to help you lose weight. An app where you track your calories, macros, fill your foods, yada, yada, yada. You probably know it. Or not, because I just realized most programmers don't come outside and really don't give a about their weight. Uh, worst example I could have ever chosen. I suck, I know, but we're gonna run with it. <laughs> Sometimes the food or the product you try to register isn't in their database, so you have to manually fill it in. Unless you, of course, have a premium subscription. Then you can just take a picture of the label and boom, it scans and auto fills the data. I wanted a very similar functionality, but I had no idea how to build it. And after some googling, I found out it takes two steps. First, I need to be able to read text from an image. And in fancy words, this is called OCR, which stands for Optical Character Recognition. And in step two, I then take the recognized text and need to identify what's what. So what are nutrition facts and what, for example, is the food's description. And OCR was pretty easy. Google already has a great machine learning library that already has this functionality inside it. So after some time messing around with the library, the character recognition part from a picture was done. But step two, the classifying thing, not so easy. And as a conservative in life and programming, I knew I no longer could avoid every marketing manager's favorite word, artificial intelligence. Okay, and before we continue, we got your favorite side segment, Book of the Month. And this month, I read The Lean Startup by Eric Rice. It's a very small, cool book with some practical tips straight out of Silicon Valley, with smart frameworks, guides to iterate fast, and a constant reminder to get your MVP out as fast as possible. Which hit pretty hard, because I've been working on this thing for six months and realized, let's just say, it's time to publish. And yeah, I found the book really useful, but if you're not building a startup, I wouldn't recommend it. But anyway, let's get back to text classification. And for this, I found out I had three options. First one, actually not being AI, is making use of regex rules. But this was just too rigid and inflexible for my use case. The second one was using big LLMs like ChatGPT or Claude. But then I would be so dependent on these big corporate companies and find myself waking up in Black Mirror Season 7 Episode 1. So yeah, I really wanted to avoid that. And finally, I found the third option, fine-tuning a model like Bird. Which sounds techy and cool, but how the f do I do that? And here's the funny part. I had a concrete real world use case for AI. But when I asked for some guidance on Reddit, on forums, even some other devs in the company I work with AI in their job title, but nobody was able to give me a concrete roadmap to follow. They all said, just fine tune a model. And I'll be like, cool, how? And they respond something like, yeah, just put some Python library, man. I would ask, which one? At the end of the day, they just didn't know and they find it funny because for all this ai hype that's going on in the world nobody could tell me and it's absolutely insane to me but uh yeah so i was back at the square where i always seem to end up locking myself in a room for a couple of weeks and doing my own research 
Yeah, I'm sorry, another side segment, but it's a cool one because I almost landed a Flutter developer job. I applied for some vacancy with little to no expectations and suddenly I was emailing with the lead developer and I showed him some of my hobby projects I made and he actually seemed really interested and he actually gave them a look. In the end, they went for someone else, probably a child genius with a PhD and I don't know what else, but, uh... but hey, for someone who learned Flutter eight months ago, I really felt like I was being considered. So for any self-taught software developer out there in the wild, I know it's hard, but we got some hope, okay? <laughs> So I wanted an offline AI model and found out about the TF Lite package, which lets you use a TensorFlow model inside your Flutter app. It was perfect. There was only one issue. I didn't know what the hell a TensorFlow was. <laughs> so yeah, what did I do? I immediately bought a Udemy course and I found out that I needed multi-class classification. In simple terms, I wanted my model to be able to sort of categorize the text. So being able to distinguish the amount of carbs, the food's title and the description of the food. And in the course, I immediately found out that deep learning is a lot about Python libraries, a lot of math, and basically a lot, a lot of math. But first I learned how to use Google Colab, which is a free cloud-based environment where you can train your own machine learning models. I explored Python libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and other libraries to transform datasets, which you can get for free on this awesome Kaggle website. And no, I'm not sponsored, it's just free stuff. And using these libraries, you can split your dataset into training and testing sets. Then I also learned how to tokenize text. In simple terms, it means that my AI is actually able to understand it. And it was at this point I realized that Bert is probably all Awesome, but my model just needed to be able to do this one task and training it for just that would be enough So I put the fine-tuning bird path in the dumpster and started creating my own AI baby Which I named Antonio Emilio the Milf Hunter 69 So with Keras, I was able to start building my own neural network that involves choosing key components like activation function loss function and an optimizer in simple terms That's like all the math I mentioned earlier and I would really recommend that you just search this online for your own specific case so are you doing binary classification? Then use these set of functions. Or if you like me and you use multi-class classification, use these functions. And all this information is really available online. Or simply as ChatGPT. And to be honest, I also really want to dive deeper into the math and find out why this all really works. But right now, as mentioned earlier, my main and solely focus should be on getting the MVP out into the world. So we'll save this side quest for later. So after building the model layers, you train it over several epochs, which is just a fancy term for training cycles. And after a few tweaks, I honestly couldn't believe my own eyes. Antonio Emilio de Milf Hunter 69 was actually performing really well on the test data and predicting with a super high accuracy. And I was just so happy and a proud dad because I was finally making some progress for my new features. It's actually working! What the look? It took a very long time to sort of wrap my head around what I was doing and it was a bit of a struggle, but I managed to get out until I hit a wall. Because I had now made Antonio Emilio the Milf Hunter 69, but I still needed to get it inside my Flutter app. And remember the TF Lite package from earlier that does this? It doesn't support all TensorFlow's capabilities. Imagine that TensorFlow is like a Ferrari and TF Lite only accepts Toyotas. Something like that, with no LSTM layers or a bi-directional layer. So I had to spend another couple of days redoing things and finding out what TensorFlow features I needed to dump, which sadly meant I had to drop some performance of my model. But eventually, I was able to export my model, load it into Flutter, and I don't want to blow my own horn, but my model, it gets the job done. It makes some minor mistakes here and there, but it's freaking solid. So after I think a side quest for like a month plus, I now finally have an offline AI model that actually works. This was Devlog 1. I'll be back with Devlog 2 and I hope I could give you a glimpse in what I've been through these last couple of weeks and keep you up to date on my progress and everything. When the time is ready, I will show my app, show what it does and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, if you're still watching, as always, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and as always, I see you all in the next video. Three, two, Peace. One.